We're going to write the formula for this compound, sodium acetate. Sodium is Na, it has a plus one charge. Acetate is C2H3O2 with a negative one charge. Now I do want to tell you that sometimes when you look up acetate, it will be given to you this way. Uh, CH3COO with a negative one charge. And notice it's the same thing. Um, C2, you got two carbons, H3, and then O2. We're, it's the same thing, we're just writing it a different way. Now, whenever I do polyatomic compounds, it's always easier if you put a circle around it, but leave the charge on the outside. And the rule is that you can never change anything inside that circle. So you're probably seeing this. This is real easy. Um, we have a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's just simply going to be N A C two H three O two. Now, in case you need to see it balanced, um, so that the charge is balanced, remember it is a compound, so the overall charge is going to be equal to zero. This is a negative one and a positive one. The least common multiple, of course, is going to be a one. So it takes one of these, one times negative one, and it takes one of these, one times positive one. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a different example. Let's say that we had, instead of sodium acetate, we had a, an aluminum acetate. Aluminum is a plus three charge, and then acetate again, C2H3O2, has a negative one charge. Notice that I am putting my polyatomic ion in a circle. I cannot change anything in that circle. Now, this time, I know I'm still dealing with a compound. My overall charge has to be equal to zero. When I balance these charges out, I have to look for a least common multiple between 3 and 1. So that's going to be a 3. This can be a positive 3 plus a negative 3 is going to equal 0. Okay, 3 times negative 1 will give me a negative 3. 1 times positive 3 will give me a positive 3. So now when I write this formula, I write AL and in parentheses C2H3O2 parentheses and I put the 3 outside of the parentheses.